Hello, my name is Eugene, and I'm just making a video because there's some poor information out there about this PCM uh, repair on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. The PCM is a pretty solid system in the, uh, in the Jeep. The only problem is, is that there's a connection issue that takes place every so often. You see some really bad information where people say, put a longer screw inside of here and that'll fix your problem. Well, it sort of fixed your problem, and I'll, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but let's, let's get into the details about this thing in the first place. These are pretty solid PCMs. As you can see, this is the PCM out of, out of, out of uh, Grand Cherokee. It has three connectors that go inside of here. As the connectors go in there, they pull down on this header right here, and uh, that tends to cause some problems. Uh, another repair that, 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 that's been out there is put a, um, a zip tie inside of there and kind of move the wiring a little bit and, and, and take some of the stress off, and that also helps, but that's not, that's not the issue either. Bottom line is, is uh, you're trying to find the root cause uh, that's really going on, and, and we'll get to what's going on. So first things first, you've got to take apart the, the, the PCM. Uh, to take apart the PCM, you have a couple of detents all the way around here. You take, take a wrench, you go out there, and you, you have to loosen up the detents. And there's two separate systems inside of here, one first cover and then another cover down on the bottom. There's two screws holding the second cover. You take the two screws off. Uh, the two screws have a tamper-resistant kind of a, a, um, a screw inside of there. So if you want, you can just go out there and break the little tamper-resistant piece inside of there, or you can just actually get the right type of uh, uh, screwdriver. Okay, once you take it off, you take a screwdriver and wedge it out on the sides. Now this is a little bit on the tough side because there is some uh, gel inside of there where they sealed it up. So this one's been taken apart before. I took this one apart about three years ago to, to fix this problem. I have another problem in my Jeep right now, and it turns out that this probably wasn't it, but it's just I wanted to take a look at it before I went any farther. Anyway, but while I had it taken apart, I thought, let me make this video. Uh, so once you take this off, you get the header, uh, or you get the, uh, the other uh, board on there. When you take a look at the inside, uh, what I really disconnected, when I, what I really tore open, was this other extra kind of weaker gel that's all the way around it. So here's this really good gel right here that holds that, uh, uh, the, the electronics in place. And the, uh, uh, there's this weaker gel that, that I just kind of ripped apart. Uh, came apart really easy. It's just you have to kind of pry it to, to, to get it off the first time. So once you access that, you'll end up seeing that there is some uh, electronics right here. Of course, the main part of the, uh, of the PCM is right inside of here. You can't see because there's a lot of gel inside of here. Uh, but this is where the real brains is happening at. On this side, on this side is actually the uh, voltage regulator side of it. So uh, uh, there is some voltage regulators inside of here. Uh, the 12 volts go in inside of this uh, system and then goes down into this header, goes to, uh, uh, makes 5 volts out of here and then pushes back out. But because the voltage is lower, it's a higher current and that causes a problem to the header. Uh, if you take a look at the header, Right here, the header is actually a bunch of pins that go against some pads inside of there. And so the, the header sits like this and the pad sits like that. And in time, if a solder breaks, then the header starts coming back on there. Now to find out if it's actually bad or not, the best way to out there is, is to get your multimeter. I have to put a safety pin inside of there so I could actually reach down inside of the header. You put put it inside, uh, inside of one of the header pin openings and then you actually have to touch the pad not the, pa not the pin itself but the pad and you can see it's, I, have, I have continuity right there now what you'll end up finding is that you're going to have continuity on all of them but if you go out there and put a little bit of stress on there and you, put, you, you touch the header and you push back on the header you'll see that the, it might disconnect and that's the biggest problem inside of there is people might, might open this up and, and it's actually fine but the solder had already broken, uh, so you won't be able to tell that until you take the, the uh, until you take the stress off of it. Uh, so, so you put some force on there to kind of disconnect it. So that's usually what happens. And if you take a look at these couple of pins that are starting over here on, on this side, this is actually where the five volts is at because you can see the traces are a little bit larger than the rest of it. So let me see if I can get a little bit closer inside of there. Probably not a good good view inside of them, but ultimately these larger traces is where the, where the actual uh, uh, higher current uh, voltage is going through there uh, and those are the ones that can fail so actually it's really only one trace that failed, it was the third one that failed 
but because some of these traces were bigger than the others, I went ahead and just uh, sold, resoldered three of these traces, and that was the problem right there. Uh, the reason why they, they, they tell you that uh, putting a screw inside of there will help, what you're really doing by putting a larger screw inside of here is you're putting stress on this header to where you'll, you'll end up kind of, here's the header pin, here's the, uh, 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 here's the header pin, here's the pad, and you'll put a screw inside of it that's longer, uh, long, longer and it'll kind of put a stress on there to make it, to force a contact, but that's not the root cause. The root cause is a bad solder. So if you just take it apart, you can repair that solder and everything will be okay. So, uh, that's about it. Uh, if you choose to, to just replace the, the, the PCM, you know, that's a, I think uh, you can get them as low as maybe $350 right now. But ultimately, they're going to get this PCM right back on uh, from you for a, uh, for a core and then put, a, uh, uh, put a, a solder back in there and then resell it again. You guys can do that yourself. So, just take a look at it. If it's a bad PCM anyway, what's the big deal in taking it apart and try to find, it, uh, find out if that's really the problem? Uh, these PCMs are pretty solid and uh, they all use uh, uh, automotive type uh, electronics inside of there which means that it's not your, your, your um, Radio Shack grade electronics. These are good electronics that don't necessarily fail. Uh, out of all the years I've taken PCMs apart, I've only seen one that had really bad electronics inside of it. It was like a Suzuki Samurai or something like that. Really bad, poor components inside of that one, but every other one I've seen have been really solid so I doubt that you'll have Real, real failures inside of here. You might have a capacitor that are blown out here and there, but as for the chips, eh, they don't necessarily go out very often. Uh, so uh, just take a look at the contacts and you'll probably find out that that's the only issue that's going on. So anyway, uh, hopefully you, you can find out the problem and good luck on that. Bye.